edition of Aria's Kokum. Who's me? My name is Crystal. So today what I'm going to do is an introduction to sewing. Um, I picked up a, a little notebook yesterday and from the first video I said it's it's important to design what you're actually going to do because we're we're making regalia, fancy shawl regalia from start to finish. So uh, what I've done is I've, I did some designs and colored them with a uh, pencil crayon. Went over them in marker. And she's only four years old, so uh, her hair ties can actually be very small. And then this is the design that's going to go on her moccasin. All I have left to do is actually the border or the trim, which will probably be some nice, really nice uh, geometric design. But anyway, today I want to go over uh, some of the equipment that we're going to need for sewing. And I'm going to give you a tour of the sewing machine. And believe it or not, I was actually using the sewing machine for quite some time before I figured out all the different aspects of a sewing machine. So we'll go through that in a bit. But uh, prior to sewing, it's important that you have a clean workspace. Because if you've bought some nice material or have some nice material, there's nothing worse than laying it out on your table and there's a dirty spot and then you get your, your material dirty. So make sure your entire area is clean, including the floor, just in case you drop it, because I tend to be a klutz and drop stuff. <clears throat> so after you've cleaned your area, you want to gather all your supplies, like everything, your thread, your material, um, and you want to wind your bobbins. That way you don't have an interruption later on. I do have a few uh, notes on fabric. We like to use, or I like to use, uh, cottons or cotton blends because they breathe better. So this is especially important in the summer when it's hot and you're on the Powell Trail and it's like blistering hot out. Natural materials like cotton tend to breathe better. They're just cooler, much cooler. Um, you can also get a lot of synthetic material, but the problem with synthetic materials such as satins or polyester blends is they do not breathe and they tend to make you a little bit hotter. So that's something to keep in mind. And when you get ribbon, make sure you get fabric ribbon and not craft ribbon that you would, you know, like wrap a present in or something like that. It's important that it's fabric ribbon and you can buy it at the meter, buy the meter at any of your local fabric stores. <sighs> I do have a note on Value Village because Value Village is awesome because you can get leather, fur, there's a section where you can buy materials and they also have bags of notions whether it be rickrack, thread, bobbins, uh, ribbon, elastics. You can actually find them on the wall in the sewing section and you can find uh, you know, sections of material in somewhere by, if you look in the uh, bed sheets section where they have curtains and such, if you look in that section, there's actually a material section where you can actually buy. So I always look through there whenever I go to Value Village. <clears throat> Another thing is you don't have to buy brand new uh, hide because hide can be very expensive, especially if it's white deer hide or just you know regular tan deer hide. It can be expensive. One thing I've done in the past is I go and buy, you know, like old leather jackets in the men's and women's section, and you can use the leather from that. Just cut it up and repurpose it. It's actually good to recycle materials. I know people that have lots of snow here. I know lots of people who have, you know, bought a dress and repurposed that and used ribbon and embellished it and used that for powwow. So that's an option too if you don't want to, you know, sew your dress from scratch. And finally, these are perfect suitcases for powwow. This is actually a suitcase that I found and I'm going to use it for my granddaughter's regalia because hard body suitcases are the, uh, are the best choice for traveling to keep your regalia in one handy place. So I'm, this one is here, is in mint condition, I got it at Value Village, and yeah, and then I'm going to stick like stickers on it when she goes to the Powell, she can, you know, <clears throat> decorate it as such. So don't be afraid of Value Village, Value Village is awesome. So we're going to go over some of the tools you need for sewing, I'm going to publish a list on the comment section of this video, but right now initial list is sewing machine, fabric scissors, pins, measuring tape, a sewing gauge, a seam ripper, an iron board, an iron, and a pressing cloth. 
and finally a spray bottle so those are 10 basic things that you need for sewing um, from start to finish any sewing that I do iron an iron and iron board is really essential to have so let's start off with our tour of the sewing machine and I'm going to change camera angles and I'm going to show you all the aspects and all the tools that are available on a sewing machine <laughs> So here we have your basic sewing machine. Um, I paid about, uh, well, I don't know, $150 Canadian for this one. And it comes with two cords. One is a presser foot to control speed and the other one is the power cord. I have mine plugged into my uh, my set there. So anyway, let's get a closer look. Now, you honestly, you do not need a machine with all these fancy gadgets. Uh, this one was on sale, so I just decided to get it like that. And as you can see, once you go through spools and whatnot, um, <laughs> I just run out of places to put them, so I just put them on the uh, the wheel. This wheel rotates. What else we got here? I can honestly say that if you're going to make power regalia, you only need two stitches. Two stitches are just the straight stitch. And a zigzag. This one here has, here has two zigzags and a straight stitch. And these are all things that we'll go through later. But really, you only need a simple sewing machine that does a straight stitch and a zigzag. And you can, I've made, I don't know how many power outfits like that. So, let's get on here. This here is the presser foot. And you'll find there's a, usually a lever back there. There's usually a lever that you can adjust. So this one here, oh, see, I put that lever up and the presser foot dropped off. This here is a presser foot. There's different ones, you know, like if you want to do buttonholes and such, then it comes, it comes with the machine. I'm just going to leave that off. Also handy about this machine, every machine, is they usually have a storage compartment. And in there you have the brushes, the oils, uh, extra bobbins, that kind of thing. I usually keep a sewing gauge in there, extra needles. What else? Oh, this here is a uh, zipper foot. But anyway, all your specialty attachments can usually go in there and you just flip it up. The other cool thing about this is this entire arm comes off because you notice this is a fairly big space there. <clears throat> Two seconds while I take this off. Okay, I needed two, sec two hands actually to... Okay, I needed two hands to actually take that off. But what happens is this entire thing comes off like such and then you can remove it and you can put that off to the side and then you have a nice small area if you're doing like sleeves or small items and that's that whole thing comes off that's pretty common in all sewing machines so i'm just gonna stick that back on there it snaps right back on <laughs> so those are the basic parts of your sewing machine. Another nifty thing, and I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be honest, I did not know about this little nifty thing. Let me focus. See this little thing here? That's a thread cutter. I did not know about this. I was sewing for five years before I realized that. But let's say you're sewing along here and you have those threads that come out. You just pass them through here and it cuts your thread. So I did not know about this until I saw my sister-in-law using it and I was like, what is that? But every sewing machine has a thread cutter there. So yeah, cool. Things I wish I had known when I was sewing. Uh, what else we got here? So there's a certain way that you uh, thread your machine. Usually, my, see my machine are, you know, tells you right there. There's thread. This is removable. And then you can interchange a thread. And then every sewing machine has a bobbin. That's uh, this round thing here. Now, with bobbin, this is what I was talking about when I said you have to wind them. These are removable and it also shows you. See, there, it shows you how the bobbin goes in. So these things have to be wound separately from this thread here. So uh, when you're in a project, any sewing machine uses two threads. So it uses the top thread and it uses a bobbin. 
So your machine actually is a, whoops, sorry, is a bobbin winder too. So just read the instructions on your manual and it will show you how to wind a bobbin. So mine, mine's right there. <sighs> what else? So um, also, your machine will probably come with two or three bobbins, but you can also buy bobbins that are steel like this one, or you can buy plastic ones at any fabric uh, store. So what I would do is before I started sewing, is let's say like here, my sewing machine is loaded with red. Make sure that you have all your red thread and probably about two or three bobbins, all the bobbins that you need for your ribbons, uh, match to your fabric, have them all, you know, wound and full prior to starting because trust me there's nothing worse than going along and suddenly your bobbin thread runs out and then you realize oh wait wait and then you're gonna have to take 15 20 minutes out to actually wind your bobbin so another thing I wanted to talk about is maintenance you actually have to oil your sewing machine I had a sewing machine that was a Kenmore which was made by Sears and that thing lasted me for 23 years um, and it only broke down because I didn't know you had to oil it. Nobody told me these things, but yes, you have to oil them. So uh, make sure that you space, pay special attention to the maintenance section in your manual and do that. Um, as you can see in this little compartment, there's actually brushes and oils and uh, that sort of thing in there. So it's good to uh, become familiar with everything that comes with your sewing machine, like the bobbins and such. And make sure you, you know, maintain your sewing machine. And you can buy sewing machine needles at any fabric store. So make sure you do that. Um, I only have one sewing machine at the moment. I'm always on the lookout for a used sewing machine because sometimes your sewing machine does break down. And there's nothing more disappointing than, you know, you're sewing away and your sewing machine breaks. I am on the lookout for another used sewing machine just so that doesn't happen to me. But anyway, so that's your basic tour of the sewing machine. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, remember that uh, go ahead and design your regalia. Make sure you color it all in and plan everything out. And then the next video will be announced in the next few days. And we'll get on to actually sewing. And I'll show you how to make your own patterns. Because remember, we're going with Aria's brand new fancy shawl regalia. Um... Finally, I don't endorse any particular type of sewing machine. I just use this Singer because I was ac it was actually on sale. And I always love things on sale. Okay, so remember, you don't need a fancy sewing machine. Just a basic one with zigzag and a straight stitch. Final note, this little button here. Every sewing machine has one. And this is a reverse button. So, yeah. Get familiar with this for your sewing machine. Borrow one. Uh, make sure you take good care of it. I have a hard-bodied case for mine, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next time on Arya's Cuckoo. So thank you very much for joining us today.